Hey everybody, welcome back. Talking a little bit today about the proposed IRS funding cut. And yes, it is a proposal, so sorry folks, party is over. It's not as grand as you expected it to be. It is just a proposal after all. And for those of you who are regular viewers, you notice obviously I'm in a different location, different location primarily because, yeah, I'm having computer trouble again. The power unit in my computer tower has failed, it has shut down, it is dead. And getting that fixed and borrowing another system, basically, just to keep producing videos, what are you going to do? But any, yeah, another expense I didn't need, but it is what it is, life goes on. But we're going to take a look at this article, and this comes from UPI News, and you can get this article from whatever news source you want, it's all pretty much going to be the same thing, but we're going to go ahead and read through this now, and then we're going to discuss it a little bit. You see here, Republican-controlled House votes to slash IRS funding. House Republicans voted Monday to slash billions in IRS funding in their first majority action under a new Congress and House Speaker, Kevin McCarthy. The House voted along party lines 221 to 210 Monday evening, passing legislation to rescind a good part of an Internal Revenue Service funding boost in the Democrats' Inflation Reduction Act, wow, that's an oxymoron if I ever heard it, which was passed last year. The increase in IRS funding is estimated to be about $80 billion over 10 years. House Resolution 23 would rescind certain balances made available to the Internal Revenue Services as Republican lawmakers claim the Biden administration plans to hire 87,000 IRS agents. And it says, as Republican lawmakers claim the Biden administration plans, they said they were going to do that. So it's not like the Republicans, the, the news story is kind of making it sound like it's an accusation. It's not. They literally said they were doing that. You might remember from a few months ago, I know that selective memory in the modern age is really limited and people can't remember what happened yesterday half the time, but they did do that. You could look it up for yourself. Our first bill will repeal funding for 87,000 new IRS agents because the government should be here to help you, not go after you, McCarthy said early Saturday morning after he won House Speaker following a 15th embarrassing vote. I know it didn't say embarrassing, but yeah, it is kind of embarrassing. The Treasury Department estimated in 2021 that the $80 billion would fund just under 87,000 employees, but did not say all of those would be new agents. Not all of them. They might need a janitor or something. Instead, the IRS says the money would be used to update its antiquated technology systems and hire and train new information technology specialists, as well as customer service representatives and some new agents. Now, I seriously doubt the IRS is working with outdated technology. Just on a personal note, let's go ahead and wrap this up. While the bill has passed in the House, here it comes folks, it has little chance of passing the Democratic controlled Senate or the President's desk. Yeah, Biden's not going to let that one slide, right? And here's where they really start twisting your arm. According to a Congressional Budget Office report, the IRS legislation that passed the House on Monday would increase the budget deficit by $114 billion over 10 years. So by not spending $80 billion in 10 years, it's going to cost them $114 billion. I'd like to see how that makes any sense, but what do I know? The White House blasted the measures as reckless. Yeah, I bet. House Republicans are making clear that their top economic priority is to allow the rich and multi-billion dollar corporations to skip out on their taxes while making life harder for ordinary middle class families that pay the taxes they owe, the White House said in a statement before Monday's vote. Each year, the top 1% hides about 20% of their income from the government so they can get away with not paying any tax on it. 
That means that working people who report 99% of their income to the IRS pay a larger share of collected taxes than they should, the White House added. If the president were presented with H.R. 23 or any other bill that enables the wealthiest Americans and largest corporations to cheat on their taxes while honest and hardworking Americans are left to pay the tab, he would veto it. Okay, I just want to kick the crap out of all of this. First of all, they sit there and they make the claim that the top 1% hides 20% of their income from the government so they can get away with not paying tax on it. Well, if you know they're hiding it and you know how much it is, then you should be able to tax it if it was legal to do so, which obviously you can't, which means that they're not hiding it, that you know about it. And then they say that the working class are paying a larger share than they should. Well, if you know they're paying a larger share of taxes than they should, then you shouldn't be charging them as much as you do. Um, and they, they also say the president would veto it because uh, wealthiest Americans and large corporations are cheating on their taxes. No, they're not cheating on their taxes. The loopholes, so-called loopholes, are legal. They are legal. And honest, hard-working Americans are the ones that are getting hit by stuff like this. Who do you think these agents are going after? Now, I attacked this a little bit earlier because they said that the IRS claimed that the money is supposed to go to update their technology. I guess they have old computers. They're working on old Dell systems and Apple computers and you know, big cathode ray monitors apparently and no mouse, they're still using F keys, right? Is that what we're supposed to believe? They've got some of the most sophisticated computer equipment in the world. They really do. Them and the Social Security Administration, trust me. <laughs> they're they're beating out the Defense Department in fantastic hardware and software. But who that would hurt is us. And they said they were going to use it to get more agents to go after people. This was their point. Oh, well, people have the opportunity to go out and get a tax attorney or an accountant to help them when we go after them. You have a problem with that? If you're attacking me and trying to squeeze more money out of me, and hopefully, prayerfully, I can afford a tax attorney or an accountant, which I can't, and most people can't. Actually, the wealthiest Americans are the ones who are going to be able to afford that. What's wrong with that? That's like being a judge and saying, oh, well, you had the nerve to bring an attorney to the trial. I'm really going to screw you up now. That's very arrogant. That is a very arrogant stance. And, but that's what they literally said. Now they're saying it's for technology and, oh, we, we're going to hire some agents. Yeah, we really believe you now. But again, people have a short memory. And they probably don't even remember those stories from some even just a few months ago. Kind of like 9-11, uh, we'll never forget. People don't even know what that is now. <laughs> I mean, and it would be nice if something like this passed and Kevin McCarthy and the Republicans could be just doing this for show so that you say oh gee you know that Kevin McCarthy he's a good guy after all um, but I haven't seen the IRS take a hit since the Reagan administration when they were put under investigation back then for strong arming people that were under investigation by the IRS people that were getting audited or harassed or pushed around and they still do it but it's been since the 80s that any of that was even investigated really officially. Um, the fact that they even call it an Inflation Reduction Act, it, that just gets under my skin as well. That is frustrating. There, there's no inflation reduction going on. You're spending more and more money than ever, and it's getting worse, and taxes are going up. And uh, in conjunction with this increase of funds going to the IRS and more people being hired, by the way, by the way a lot of them are getting um, SWAT-style training. For what purpose? Why are you weaponizing the IRS with actual weapons? I mean, they already have armed agents, but a lot more of them are getting that kind of training, by the way. Uh, the other thing that I find disturbing that goes hand in hand with this is the $600 rule. For those of you who are not aware of it now, every source of income that you receive whereby you earn 600 or more is reportable now. So, for example, eBay. If you sell on eBay, let's say uh, 
the average person who sells on eBay is not even a business. They're just somebody trying to get rid of some junk. You make 600 or more now, you get a, a W-2 from, from eBay, and you have to report that as income. And I mean 600 for the year, not just a single sale. So you have something that you sold that you bought 15 years ago, took a total loss on it, don't even have the receipt to prove what you paid for it, and you have to pay taxes on it on top of everything else, and that's somehow supposed to hurt the wealthiest 1% and make them pay their fair share. I'm really sick of hearing that. I'm really sick to death of hearing that statement from lawmakers and from the current administration. It makes no sense. And before anybody attacks uh, Trump on this, because I know somebody wants to, I've heard it come up before, oh, well, you know that comes from, that trickles down from the Trump administration. It may have come across his desk, but he didn't sign it. Biden did. That was Biden's decision and they claim to be attacking the wealthiest 1%, it's not going to hurt them at all. It hurts all the rest of us. It hurts all the rest of us. And by the way, uh, before the $600 rule, the limit before a W-2 on eBay was 20000 20000 which still would not be harming the wealthiest 1%, would it? So again, thoughts? Would you like to see this go through? I think it would be helpful. It would be helpful, but the uh, American taxpayer is burdened enough. They're burdened enough. Taxpayer, anybody who pays taxes is burdened enough and is a slave to the system. And we have no choice. We have no choice in the matter. They take the taxes from us by force, comes right out of our checks. We can't even get the job until we sign an oath agreeing to pay it. We have no control over how the money is spent. I know you, oh, well, you've got to vote. If you have, vote for what? That works really well. How well has voting worked for you? Be honest. Anyway, thoughts? <laughs> Let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section down below. Please do give the video a thumbs up. If you get where I'm coming from, share it if you can, subscribe if you knew all that good stuff. If you saw random cat images during the course of the video and you're wondering, what the hell is that because you're new to the channel, they are strays that my wife and I take care of and images of them actually help with the loading algorithm on YouTube. If you would like to help the channel out, or the cats for that matter, every little bit helps and we sure do appreciate it. And if that's it, then what more can I say but stay tuned folks, because there is more to come.